So, by a show of hands, who here has been, maybe for the past few years, months, weeks, etc., been on a transformational journey, maybe a, 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 a journey of change, awakening, healing? Let, let's be real here, let's, let's get honest, right? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> And I'm going to make just a small assumption, maybe a generalization, it may not apply to all of you, but just maybe some of us have gotten caught up in the New Age jungle. Yes? Modality here, teacher here, course here, crystal pocket here, juicing here, new diet here. Just kind of like the, you know, the, the full spectrum of the New Age that we've gotten so used to. And, you know, you know granted, we've all started this journey um, you know, generally from a crisis, a crisis point, suffering, midlife crisis, random crisis, relationship crisis, job crisis. And in that space, we desire to experience relief from that. Right? Relief from that. We're looking for peace, eternal peace. We're looking for 100% wellness. We're looking for a connection with purpose, a connection with relationships, community. But it seems that many of us who have ignited in this, this, this new trend, right? And I'm, I mean, I'm saying new because I'm 26, but for some of you, it may be even longer than I'm alive. Yeah. But the, 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 nature, <laughs> the, the nature of this experience, naturally, has been ignited from that and we're searching for something. But it seems like many of us have fallen into a little bit more confusion, more suffering looking outside the window in our little healing hut and seeing the normal people and saying, I, I, I almost want to be like them right now. Yeah? And so what I feel is really important is for us to connect with a little bit of honesty of what is it that we're truly looking for on this journey? What is it that we're truly longing for? Right? The, the one thing, not all of the other, you know, plethora and the kuchama of spiritual benefits, but the one thing. And in my own journey, I felt like that one thing is simply answering this one question. Who am I? And we're not looking for an answer that gives 20% certainty, 50% certainty, even 99% certainty. Because the certainty within mind will be sure in one moment and the next moment completely confused. So we're looking for a 100% conviction, full certainty as to who we are. And that's it. And it's similar to as if I was going to ask you, do you believe that you have hands or do you know that you have hands? You don't need an explanation. And so in my own journey, naturally this was ignited through, yes, stress, anxiety, business stress, relationship stress, just my own extreme nature of causing more suffering than was necessary. And, you know, I was on the journey for quite some time of, you know, achieving things and chasing that young man's dream, that, that masculine man that I was supposed to be, even though I was in this, you know, small empathetic body. And, you know, I was, I was meditating one night, March 16, 2012, it had been some time. I was living in a commercial space in Hintonburg, for those of you that are from Ottawa. Um, I had a mattress and a George Foreman, my business was going um, pretty much down the drain. And, and it, it didn't though, because meditation of course, right? And so, in that night, um, I love explaining this story because you'll never actually be able to understand the experience, unless you've experienced something yourself. But if you were to imagine the best orgasm of your life, for those of you who are of age, sorry. And, and then recognize that, you know, if we were to just, you know, not just in the lower regions, and also not just for the 10 to 15 seconds, but expand that through the entire body, expand that for an hour, and then, and then times that by maybe a thousand or 10,000, whatever multiple we want to give it. And that would describe maybe the, the experience I had that evening. That in that moment, you know, I had thought it completely changed me, but of course it was just showing me what I had, I was always, the, the capacity I always had to, to feel in this, in this nature, maybe not perpetually, but once in a while. And it ignited a journey for me, right? Obviously it would, I mean, naturally, a thousand times best orgasm, it's something. And so, you know, over the next five to six years, it was a journey that was asking me of one thing. It was asking me, are you willing to take 100% complete responsibility for the choices that you have made and the consequences of them? Period. And then I said yes, and then the Universal Council comes and says, okay, we're gonna remove all of the layers of the onion and bring you back to the core so you can answer this core question that you've been asking. So, of course, in my old personality's extreme nature, one of these experiences was not enough. I went into another two to three hundred of these experiences. Um, you know, traveling to India, doing plant medicine with the shamans, going into all the yogic techniques, all the modalities, the healing, the extrasensory perceptions, all the things that some of you understand, the rest of you, if you don't, it's not a big deal. And on that journey, 
I naturally came to this recognition that after all of these experiences of changing nature, when I thought I was, you know, peaceful, something slapped me and says, no, you're not, you're not peaceful. You're not there yet. But underlying all of these experiences, this entire time, from the moment I was born all the way up until now and beyond this, there was this unchanging experience, this unchanging, incomprehensible space of something my mind could not grasp, but something that has not been tainted, not been touched, not been scarred by any of the suffering or any of these grand experiences, it does not change, it just watches in neutrality. And it was this singular point, this little needle, that came to me not too long ago and it came to my little spiritual egoic bubble that I created with the New Age travel pack, right? The, the juice in one pocket, shaman on speed dial, <laughs> right? Crystals in the other, locked and loaded. <laughs> <laughs> and it came, and it took the pin, and it popped the bubble. And so the spiritual identity I had created, the community of the Lifestyle Center we had created initially, all of this, uh, this, this, this accoutrement of spirituality that I thought was so cool and so big and so righteous, completely collapsed. And I had to go through a little bit of time to incubate in that. But the beauty of it was, was that this space underlying all of this ups and downs was everything I had ever longed for, was everything I was searching for. And of course my fiance is here and she's pretty much telling me this the entire time, right? So men, listen to your, to your women, right? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you, that's, that's exactly right, right? You know, we just want the, we want the action. We, we, we need to know, we need to know, right? And so I come to this space and I recognize that this space is simply the conscience, not the conscious or consciousness of the conscience, the instinct, that in which knows not to kill the person beside you but to love them. The most basic understanding of what is step one, not two to infinity and all the steps and the paths and the rituals, step one. And this is not something we need to find, it's something we need to sink into and trust. And so that was when the shifting occurred. You know, I'm doing a lot more one-on-one -on -one sessions and doing retreats and transformation projects and all of this stuff in service, recognizing that this intuitive knowing represents the one golden rule. Treat another as you'd like to be treated. Serve this, the one self, not the little self, you know, like am I processing my emotions or I'm, you know, serve the self. And so we're coming together in a community, right? 500 souls in the city of Ottawa recognizing it's no longer a journey of individual enlightenment. That's been happening in the caves of India for a very long time. It's now the time of collective shifting, collective enlightenment, collective stepping. And we're in a city that is one of the most important cities in all of North America, you must remember that. And so, if I give you one thing in the story, it's simply to act as a mirror, a mirror of your own light that's being shown and connected through your recognition that wherever you are, wherever you are on your journey, you're exactly where you need to be. Exactly where you need to be. And it's in that recognition of that innate perfection that you can let go of it all. It's not to say the crystals and the travel pack and all that is useful. It's to say it's not needed for you to recognize what you are and realize the nature itself. And to clearly answer the question, who am I? And so I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and bring the attention inwards once again. And you're gonna connect in that heart space. You're gonna feel the intention that you had at the beginning of today. You're gonna to allow it to expand exponentially there. And you're gonna repeat this, this simple affirmation, this beautiful Hawaiian prayer. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. You can open your eyes. Ottawa, I look forward to creating some magic with all of you. Thank you.